we could tell as soon as she was born that she would be vision impaired. Yeah. You could hear that cry that you listen for, uh, but everybody was, something was going on. You could tell something was going on in the yeah. room, um, swarm of doctors, then you went through the layers. And Jem's condition, as per a lot of genetic conditions, wasn't intuitive, it wasn't easy. So the first week of life was a spe another stranger came in, another specialist, another specialist, and I think we got five or six specialists in and finally someone was able to give us a name. Finally, the doctor was able to say, okay, Jem's got Peter's anomaly. And when you consider that back then she was a month old and they weren't able to tell us anything more specific, within six or 12 months, we were seeing one of the doctors from one of the labs that Genes for Genes actually funds and sponsors. And then they are able 12 months later to tell us we've got a bit more information. And so each year when we go back to that team, they've had another dozen people working hard in the lab and they're getting one step closer. And in fact, we've been led to believe that within a handful of years, they'll know exactly what is the trigger for Gem's condition. And then they can start mapping the different therapies. So with the Peters, it, it's resulted in her being vision impaired. Um, and that, that has meant that she now needs a lot of support with her mobility because she can't see where she's walking. So she uses a mobility cane. Um, reading is, is one of the drawbacks for her. Um, she, she can't read print, so she's now learning Braille, as are all of us. Very often, I think a lot of people will think, oh, maybe they can cure this or um, make it better, improve her sight or whatever. And I, I honestly think for, for us in our particular condition, it's about not having it progress so that it becomes worse. Um, and we just, we just see all the research kind of supporting, supporting that. When we go in and we see the doctor, we're not seeing one doctor, we're seeing a team. And that team isn't just a medical specialist in a hospital. There aren't barriers like that. So for example, with Robin and her team at the Children's Medical Research Institute, um, they are collaborating directly with the on the ground doctors and they're bringing their therapies straight into play. It's a big partnership. Uh, so it really leverages the power of their research and their bright minds with one of the best health systems in the world. Um, and that's how we see this steady progress all the time. We live in uh, a world where we always expect that there's new stuff we can have, that, you know, bigger phones, cheaper phones, TVs, things like that. But in the end, the thing that's important for all of us is our health and our quality of life for us and for our community. And in the end, the importance of giving, giving back is that it, it comes back to you one way or the other. You may not individually have a genetic health condition like, like both of our kids, but a therapy that initially is very focused on one condition, one vision impairment, one deafness, uh, becomes a platform and it builds up and suddenly it's treating 20, 50, 100 conditions. Um, and we're seeing this happen in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. So really, when you give, it certainly helps our kids, but in the end, it gives back to yourself.